Okay, hi. Um, it is October 16th. So, um, the days are going by so fast, Christians. I mean, the, the, the time is just, I don't know if you feel it. Um, I don't know if you work, but if you work, you, I would, I would assume you feel it even more when you're at you work and the work day's already done. It's already over and you go home. Uh, I don't know if it drags out or if it goes faster, but I, I, I don't work a lot. So, but the days are just, they're just going by. There's, I mean, I just can't believe how fast it's going. I don't, I know there's something going on with that. He's like shortening the days or something. Like the time is just moving quicker. The hourglass, the sand is like almost out or something. I feel it. So I was doing the laundry a little while ago and I was praying while I was doing the laundry. Sometimes I just pray while I'm doing stuff because it's like <laughs> the day goes by so fast and it's like if I don't multitask you know I'm not gonna get things done um so while I was praying while I was doing laundry the Holy Spirit came in and was like you never made that how to pray video and I'm like geez I wasn't supposed to make any videos today I was supposed to be I'm, I'm about to do my Bible study I told myself I'm gonna do two hours solid of my Bible study um, before my kids get home and now this popped up you know so I'm gonna do that next but apparently Christians are having trouble trouble knowing how to pray or something why would I be told to make this and I looked on my list and sure enough this was on my list and I made this list like in August and sure enough how to pray was on my list of videos to make okay so there are different ways to pray obviously um, the best thing I ever did on learning when I was trying to better my prayer life which was like a two years ago basically um, maybe three now was I read Psalms and I recommend, if you have never read Psalms, you read Psalms. Because Psalms, it was incredible when I read Psalms for the first time, how much my prayers were so much like David's prayers. Like, his prayers and my prayers, like, matched up. Just the way he spoke was so familiar to me. It was like, whoa. The Holy Spirit was definitely with David. And that was before Jesus. Okay. So, um, definitely read Psalms, because David knew how to pray, all right, and it'll show you how you should be praying, if you want to be praying right. Jesus also taught how to pray with the Our Father prayer, okay, um, that's an example prayer that he left for us to use that prayer as well as model that prayer when we're praying, okay, the way he set it up to where you, our Father, um, holy is your name, hallowed is holy, holy is your name, you know, he, with respect, and with um, a greeting, you know, like a, I'm going to pray now, you know, uh, so there's different ways to pray. So how do I do this? Um, I there's like okay there's there's praying when you are focus praying. Focus praying is what I call it. That's what I call it myself. Focus praying is when you set time aside. You go to a, you go somewhere like a like he says go to your prayer closet. Go to a room if you don't have a place to go. Um, in your home because it's filled with people or something um, like mine <laughs> sometimes I have to leave 
and go somewhere. I'll go get in the car when I have a car. I don't have a car right now. Um, or go for a walk, go to a playground or a park, or go to a parking lot if you have to, and go, go somewhere, sit down, and just focus pray. Just pray, okay, for, a, you know, some kind of amount of time, and just pray, all right? Um, often Jesus would leave and go somewhere and be alone to pray. Okay, that's like focused praying. That's when the, your prayers are like se serious when you're praying that way. Um, I, my prayer closet currently is my bathroom. It's the only place I can get away from everybody. So it's actually, that's become my prayer closet, literally. It's just, it's like, I wish it was bigger to where I could put a bench in there and just <laughs> sit in there. Because I can't, it's the only place I can go sometimes, unless no one's, unless people aren't home. Sometimes I go to my daughter's room, um, because that's a very good place for me to go pray. When it, when people aren't home, and I'm able to go in a different room, I'll use her room. Um, outside on the porch, at night, under the stars, I really like that. I really like to pray at that time. I'd often do that on Friday nights when my parents go out to eat. Um, that's a good night for me to get out on the patio and pray under the stars, which is my favorite thing to do when I'm as far as praying goes. So make your own little system like that. Um, the other way to pray is to pray while you're doing things. You know, you there's no nothing wrong with praying in your mind while you're cleaning your house or praying in your mind while you're at work um, at your job um, taking just like two minutes and just stop what you're doing and just thank him and, and say some prayers and then go back to work you know that's just like throughout the day and everybody every Christian should be doing that throughout the day okay um, on the spot praying is like when like something goes on something right in front of you like someone's acting, like say you're an example. This happened the other night. We went out to Golden Corral, which is this buffet place. And this man was all mad at someone. And he wanted his money back. And he's cursing and he's threatening the workers. And it was ridiculous. And my kids are there and they're looking at me like, what is wrong with this guy? And he was like from New York. And he's like, oh, bust your teeth in. And he was all like that. And it was ridiculous. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, Lord, have mercy on this soul. Lord, I'm praying for this man right now. I'm praying. I'm binding up this anger in Jesus' name. <laughs> like, I was literally praying at the cash register to myself for this dude, you know, because he was, and he calmed down. He calmed down. He stopped cursing. He stopped flipping out. I don't know if he just calmed down or if my prayers were the reason he calmed down. I don't know, you know, but... When on the spot praying is like when you come across, say you're on Facebook and you come across someone's in trouble and you just pray right then and there for them. Okay. That's on the spot praying. That's important. So you got focus praying. You got throughout the day praying. Um, you got on the spot praying. Um, then we have public kind of praying. Like uh, when we gather together with other Christians and we pray together. You got that kind of praying. When you're praying with others, that's extremely powerful um, ways to pray. Um, my, I pray with my children. I pray with my son. I teach him how to pray, and I pray with my son when he goes to bed. Uh, I pray with my daughter when she goes to bed. We used to pray before they went to school. I kind of forgot to do that. You know, we used to, you know, kind of hold hands and stand together and say a little quick prayer. Bless our day, Father. Thank you for our day. You know, just a simple uh, protect my children while they go to school. You know, that, that kind of little prayer um, before they go to school. I totally dropped that. on. That. I didn't mean to. I need to get back to that. Um, so group praying, basically, when you go to church and you pray together as a church body. Um, when you're more than one of you come together, you can do this on social media too. You can message one of your Facebook friends 
and say, we need to pray about this. And if, obviously, if they're a Christian, you message them, we need to pray about this right here. Okay, will you pray with me? And you just pray something, and they pray with you th via social media. I mean, this is, this, this should be, a, prayer should be like water to a Christian. Okay, it's just a constant, everyday thing. And you keep praying for something. Like, if it's something you need or something important, you just keep praying. Okay? Now, then we have general prayer and specific prayer. Okay? General prayer. I'm not making this stuff up, guys. The Holy, this is what the Holy Spirit has taught me. Literally. Um, I don't know if this is a teaching that you might find somewhere else. I don't know. I haven't looked at anyone else's teaching on prayer. But I can tell you this. There's general prayer and then there's specific prayer. Okay, general prayer is like praying for the lost. Praying for people that are seeking the Lord to find Him. Uh, praying for God to answer the prayers of uh, the poor and the starving. Um... Praying for, um, yeah, praying for the poor, praying for the sick, praying for the widows, praying for the orphans, but like, but like in general, just praying for people, praying for the self-righteous to be humbled, you know, praying for your, um, your family in general, praying for protection, uh, from the enemy, you know, that's like general, these are like general praying, okay, that should be added in your, when you do your focus prayer, you should definitely take time, a few minutes to pray for in general, and then you have specific prayer, which is more specific, more tailored to the need or want of the moment, or what's going on in your life, um, that should be specific to you and to individuals that you need to pray about, pray for. Say, um, you should always pray specifically for yourself as far as protection from deception is an everyday prayer for me. Um, and believe that you're not, you won't be deceived because of that prayer. Uh, protection from deception. You pray for your growth your spiritual growth and maturity and your walk. You pray to have more time to pray. You pray for to keep your heart humble. Die to yourself. You know, you confess the sins that you can think of that you've done that day or recently. Um, you uh, pray for specific people that you know that need prayer. You know, like your aunt and uncle needs prayer for this, or your friends need prayer for that, or someone needs prayer for this, or you're, you're, you're looking for a job and you're praying that, Father, please find me a job, a way to provide according to your word. I need to provide for my family, you know, and you, and then, you know, you pray specifically for people. So you've got generalized prayer and you've got specific prayer. Okay, then you've got um, scripture prayer. Okay, scripture prayer is when you are dealing with an issue or a topic and you find scriptures pertaining in the Bible, pertaining to that issue, subject, topic, and you pray those scriptures out loud uh, or to yourself and you purposely either write them down in a notebook or on index cards or just straight out of the Bible, but you pray those scriptures. Okay, um, that... That would be good to always add into your specific prayer time and your focus prayer time. Um, if you want to pray some scriptures, take 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 them with you wherever you go. Have them in your purse, or have, that's a friend of mine recommended that. Have them in your have them on you and pray them that week. You know, and then next week pick some more different ones. Pray those ones. You know, that's. Praying the actual scriptures. Okay? So, these are all ways for you to pray. When you're praying, you can be on your knees. You should definitely have sometimes 
prayer on your knees. Some people, it's all the time. But prayer on your knees is important. Because um, it's like submissive. It's like bowing down to him in a submissive, humbled heart when you're praying. Um, some people pray standing up with their hands out. Um, that's a powerful prayer. That's like a power pray praying. Um, some people just pray sitting down with their hands together. Uh, that's, that's another way you can pray. It doesn't really matter how you do it. I, I do them all. It depends on the moment or the situation or the, or the, or where I am or, or the environment or what, what's going on or the circumstances. It all depends. I do them all. I do everything I'm telling you. I do it all. So praying in your bed, laying down before you go to sleep. Everyone seems to do that one, and that's very common. Um, so, you can pray inside, you can pray outside, you can pray anywhere. Any situation. That's the one thing that we have as Christians that we can do all the time. It's a wireless connection to God. Okay? When you pray, you should take time to listen. Just sit there after you're done praying and just listen for a little while. Just, just don't say anything. Just be quiet. Be still and you might actually hear back something okay if you shut your mouth after you prayed for a while you might actually hear something right away um so and answers to prayers it's a whole nother subject I'm not gonna go into that right now but that is just ways and, and how you can pray and there's examples throughout the Bible on how to do this now I hate to ruin the video with this, but if you if you notice, not one time did I mention start praying in tongues. Not one time did I bring that up. Okay, there's a denomination out there, a set of Christians out there, who will do everything I just said, or similar, or like it, but then they will add in that during their prayer, all of a sudden... They just start praying in tongues. Now this is a bunch of noise. You don't have an interpreter. So you can't interpret what you just prayed. What, whatever just came out of your mouth. You can't decipher what it, what it meant. It's not fruitful. You can't understand it. Um, there's a verse about how we do not know what to pray for all the time. So the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf. With groanings that cannot be spoken. Okay. So. There are times when we don't know what to pray for. Or we don't even know. Or we or we get caught up in life. And we don't take the time to pray. That the Holy Spirit prays on our behalf. For us. Okay. That has nothing to do with tongues. It's groanings that can't be spoken. That means your your tongue you have not you're not involved in that in that when the Holy Spirit's interceding for you you're not involved in that you have no control over that he does that when he wants to you have no idea when he's doing that you you that is something that every Christian has and that's our helper our comforter our strengthener is the Holy Spirit he does that for us we have when when we're sleeping. He could be doing that, you know, that, that has nothing to do with our speaking or our tongues or our flesh tongue at all. Nothing to do with it. That verse has nothing to do with tongues whatsoever. The verse in Peter about praying in the spirit, he commands all Christians to pray in the spirit. Praying in the spirit is just praying, praying focused. Like when I was talking about focused praying and specific praying when you leave your house, when you leave and go somewhere to pray, that's that's when you're praying in the spirit. Okay, when you're praying without any agenda or motives behind you, except for godly motives, um, you're praying in the spirit. The, the, praying in the spirit has nothing, nothing to do with praying in tongues. Nothing. Okay, these people that do the tongues thing, they think. That all that stuff means tongues. It doesn't. Someone taught them that. They believed it. And they do it. And that has nothing. And it's not what that means. 
It's not what that means at all. Um, so when people start praying in tongues, what happens is now they're not praying anymore. They're not really praying from them. There, there's no fruitfulness in the prayers at all. They can't understand what they're praying. They can't even say amen to what they're praying. There's no one there to interpret. Uh, Paul says if that happens, you don't say, you you shut your mouth. You know, you don't, you don't do that. Okay, because what you're speaking, only God knows what you're saying, and you can't say amen to it, and you're just building yourself up like you're, you're, um, building up your own mind in a proud way through your special superpower prayer language that's not even real. That's not even biblical. Okay, Paul was being sarcastic. He was trying to give an example. He was like that. You have to know how Paul was to understand Paul. Um, and the Bible clear, clearly shows how Paul was, his character. So, you know, people take everything he said so literal. You know, it's literally figurative in many ways. Um, his examples weren't always literal. Um, they could be, but not always. Like, it could you could move a mountain. If God says he'll move that mountain, you can move a mountain metaphorically in your life through prayer. You know, there's different things that they take so wrong and so what they do is they start praying in tongues and now they're not praying from themselves anymore they're just blah 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 blabbing and they're babbling and babbling and they're being repetitious and god tells you in his tells you don't pray like that that's how the heathen pray that's how witches pray that's how cults pray you know don't pray to me like that they think they'll be heard for their much speaking that's how catholics pray with their rosary you're chanting you know so, it's the same thing. It's just tongues. It's it's a heathen practice. It's not what biblical tongues was. It's not the same. It's not the same at all. Okay? When they were praying in tongues back in that time, it was out loud amongst group prayer. Okay? And it was for so some people that didn't know the language knew what the prayers were. Okay? Because people didn't know each other's languages back then. Um, when they were all getting together with the Gentiles, there was many different languages. When they and when the church started, there was many different languages. There wasn't no translators. There wasn't people just didn't know what each other's languages were. Okay, so the praying in tongues has gotten out of hand. There's so many Christians out there who their prayers are not getting answered because they're not praying. They're just blabbing. They're just blabbing nonsense. They're not really praying. If they think that's going to answer, if they think that can substitute praying in the spirit for real, they're totally mistaken. Totally mistaken. That is not better. That is not more powerful prayer. That is not some secret language between you and God that you just don't understand it, and he does. That is not how it goes. And people that pray like that, they're missing the whole point of prayer. They're not getting it. They've been deceived. They've been taught a, a religious practice. Okay, they're not leaning on God. And they're not leaning on God's understanding. They're not they're not putting their trust in God. They're they're doing something that they were taught to do. Um just like any other false religion. So I tell people all the time that do this, don't pray like that. That's not doing anything for you. They think it is. It's giving them some kind of special feeling. But I'm telling you, real prayer, sometimes you really don't feel much. Sometimes you feel a lot. Okay? It all depends on how you are when you're praying. Okay? And where you're coming from. So that's like ways to pray. What to pray for? Protection. Um, spiritual growth. More time to do things for God. Um, to over overcome sin. To overcome uh, fears and worries and anxieties. Um, praying for people's 
praying for answers to prayer, praying for, for God's will to be done is number one. At the end of your praying, you should always say, and God, let your will be done. Whatever your will is, be done. You know, not mine. You know, even though you might be praying for this to happen or that to happen or for this to go on or for, for, for an answer to this or, or, or whatever, it's still his will. You still submit to his will in your praying. In your praying, you submit to his will. Um, praying for your health, praying for the health of others. Um, praying for opportunities to minister to people, praying for uh, ways to get to the lost, praying for strength, uh, praying for healing, praying for wisdom, counsel, use, uh, how to use your spiritual gifts, how to know what they are, you know, um, praying for more communication from God. You want to hear him more. You want him, you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit in your life. Um, you know, it's giving control to him and having self-control over you. It's a joint together communion. You should also do the Lord's Supper. If you don't do the Lord's Supper at your church, ours does it once a month. At the six o'clock service at night, um, I don't always make it to it, so I try to do the Lord's Supper every Sunday or Saturday. Usually Saturday on the Sabbath, I do the Lord's Supper. Um, I try to do it every Saturday or Sunday. Okay, um, I have a little bottle of wine in my bathroom with a wine glass, and I have matzahs, those little matzah unleavened bread things, little cracker thingies. I got those. I do the Lord's Supper in there with some focused prayer, and you should do that. If you're a believer, you should do that. You should have that communion with him. It's a remembrance of that Last Supper until he comes back to fulfill that marriage supper. That's a rehearsal, so you should do that. You should add that to your prayer life. Um, you can also have a prayer journal where you write out your prayers. I do that too. I have a prayer journal. I do it about once, twice a week. I write out prayers. I write out what's happened during the week. I write out what God has shown me. I write out, I write out answers. It's good to have that because when you're done with a notebook, you should go back and read it all and you'll be amazed at how many times you prayed for something and it happened. You prayed for something and it happened. You prayed for something and it happened. Okay. I have, I have, I have notebooks. I have notebooks of notebooks of notebooks of times I've written out my prayers and if I was to read them all I guarantee you probably at least 50 60 75 percent have all been answered already you know um so it's good to document your prayers God loves writing he loves when we write to him I write letters to him um I write about what he's shown me what I what I'm feeling what I what I, you know I, it's kind of like a diary um, I've taught my daughter how to do this as well. So when you take all of that together, it, let's just say you have a prayer journal. Um, inside the prayer journal is where I, I also, I have too. I have a journal and then I have a notebook of scriptures that I come, when I come across scriptures, I write them in there and I pray the scriptures. Um, when I do specific prayer, I pray the scriptures over, over the people that relate those scriptures that relate to their prayer needs. Um, so I have two of those two things, all right, which is all in my bathroom and a pen. Okay. And then I, I have, um, and then I do the different, the generalized praying, the specific praying, leaving the house to pray, leaving the, uh, going into a room or bathroom to pray, praying throughout the day, uh, praying with people on social media that are friends of mine, group prayer at church. So my life is just filled with prayer, filled with praying. Okay, it's an all-day thing. I pray without ceasing. It is all the time. It is all the time. It is consistent. There are days, of course, where I forget to do any focal. I forget I get busy and I don't do any focused praying. Um, and I kind of just stick with some general throughout the day praying. Um, and then when that happens, if that happens like two, three days in a row, that's when I get weak. 
I start getting weak and I need to find, I need to find a time to get back in communion with God and get back focused. Okay. So this is, and it's sometimes it's just a struggle to pray right. Okay. So I'm just trying to help. All right. I'm not trying to boast how I pray or how, what God has taught me. I'm trying to show you what God's taught me so you can use it too and do, do it your own way. Um, and maybe it'll help you. So if you are one of these Christians that does the tongues thing, I really recommend you please drop that for a while. Can you just not do that for 30 days? Please. I'm asking you if you're one of those Christians that does the tongue things. I don't want to hear, no, that's my special prayer language. No, that's my gift. No, that's my this. No, I want you to just tr just trust me. Just trust me. For 30 days, for one month, for three weeks even, don't pray in tongues. Just don't. Just don't do that. Just pray from you. Because there are people that never, I know them, they never pray from them. They're always doing the tongues thing. The tongues thing is like every time they pray is the tongues thing. Which means you have to go somewhere every time where people aren't around you and la 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 la, you know, in order to pray. Or they do it quietly somewhere. But this is like you can't even pray this quietly with your mouth closed. You know, sometimes I'm praying out loud. Sometimes I'm not praying out loud. I'm praying to myself quietly or whispering my prayers. Okay, I'm not always out loud with them. Okay, so these people that do the tongues things, they're always out loud praying. You know, it's just, and I know they do regular prayer too. But they, but they think that this is some kind of extra special power prayer when they do this tongues thing. And it's totally opposite, guys, because it's not meant for that. Tongues was never meant for praying to yourself. It was never meant for that. It was never meant for being alone and praying to yourself. People have been deceived for so long on this false teaching. I recommend you just drop it for a few weeks Pray from yourself for those weeks. Really, really focus. And I guarantee you, you will see something you never saw before. I guarantee you, you will have, be so much closer to God. You will be so much closer to God. Like really, not superficially, like really, really intimately closer to him. I guarantee you, you won't need those tongues. Now, if you can't control the tongues and they just start going... That's not the spirit taking over you. That is not the Holy Spirit taking over you. That is another spirit. Okay? And then you are oppressed. You have issues because something is controlling you. That's not self-control. Self-control is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. If you can't control your tongue, literally, it just starts going, there's something going on. There's something going on. And you need to pray for deliverance. That's another thing. Pray for deliverance from sin. Pray for deliverance from problems that you're having, issues that you're having. Pray for deliverance. Um, binding and loosing, which is another subject. I'm going to have to do a separate video on binding and loosing prayer, which is which is the, actually really powerful. So I will go on with that another time. But I hope this helped people. Um, just trying to give you what I do and, and, and why. and what This is literally what the Holy Spirit has taught me. Because I never prayed before I was saved. I rarely prayed. And when I prayed before I was saved, it was like a wish list. It was like, dear God, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. That was before I was saved. It was just a wish list like a little kid. You know, like my daughter will put, I want a tablet. Well, she got a tablet. <laughs> you know, it's just, it was a wish list. When I got into trouble... And the Lord was pulling me in when I was being chastened and punished and disciplined and being um, being remade like to where I was being humbled. I was being humbled uh, when I was going through that. My prayers were more like, God, please, this help me. God, please help me this. God, please, where are you? It was more like begging. My prayers were like begging all the time, begging, begging, whining and crying like why this is happening to me why is this happening to me oh god help me this help me this help me please help me like it was all help 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 when i was going through my humbling stage that i went through before 
be, right before I was saved, that like those that year or two, right before I was saved, a lot of bad things were happening in my life, and that, and my prayers were more like begging for help. Okay, they weren't they weren't like the prayers a few years before that were like wish list. I want this. I want that. I want this. So they went from proud to humble. You know, from proud fall humble. Okay, in the fall. And then finally, salvation. And then that's when, after that, that's when prayers became, became from a thankful heart. Now, that's another thing. I forgot to say that. Always in your prayers is about, there's always a separate section for thank yous. I mean, thank you for this. Thank you for that. So the same things over and over. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my children. Thank you for my food. Thank you for my shelter. You know, like always thanking him and praising him for everything that he has given you and everything that he has done for you. And of course you sit there and you're like, well, gee, that would take a whole 24 hours straight to pray like that. Well, you got to add those in. you got to add your thanksgivings. He wants you to be thankful for what you have. It'll keep you humble. You have to pray in a thankful heart, always thanking him in your prayers for what he's already done, praising him for what hasn't been done yet that will will be done you know um you know this is this is all part of it so the thank the, the the thanking i forgot to mention that i'm sorry god that was very important uh be very thankful in your prayers thanking him for everything you have especially when you're going to be asking him for something that you need you better remember what you're thankful for already what he's already done for you you know and have always have faith and trust and a submissive heart and a humble heart while you're praying. And that's really praying in the spirit. So, um, God bless. I hope this helped somebody. And he just wanted me to put this out. So I put, I'm doing what he said. And I'm being obedient. And I'm putting it out there for anyone to uh, have more, um, more insight on prayer. And I'm not, it's not a very specific video. It's kind of very general. It would take forever for me to go into major detail or give you an example. God already gives you an example. Be respectful in your prayers. Amen. In Jesus' name, always at the end of your prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Always at the end of your prayers. We pray in Jesus' name. Um, pray to the Holy Spirit. Pray to God and pray to Jesus. All three of them. So I hope this is help helpful. If If you want more information on this i'll gladly do it i'm going to do my binding and loosing video probably next week and i'll put it up but if you want any more specifics and you need help with something tell me just let me know and i'll make another video okay anybody that wants like more details just comment and i'll make a video more tailored to the details if that sounds like a good idea okay thank you